A few months ago, we did a video talking about how to choose the best SSD and external enclosure for yourself. And in that video, we were using one of the many enclosures that Orico has in their catalog alongside a PNY CS2140 SSD. After tasting the speed, I immediately fell in love with it and I set off on a quest to use the steps that I mentioned in that video to create my own perfect USB 4.0 SSD. And I did. Here it is and I have been using it for the past 3 months or so. And my question that I want to pose in this video is, is it actually worth the price and to upgrade it to USB 4? Well, let's find out. So before we begin, I have to talk about some backstories. I was using the ROG Arian external SSD enclosure for a few years actually, and I have a SATA 3 SSD inside, which means the enclosure will still have some leeway in terms of its speed because SATA 3 SSD is actually kind of slow, and this is a USB 3.2 Gen 2 enclosure, which means 10 gigabits per second maximum throughput. Realistically speaking, I only get about 750 megabytes per second maximum out of this enclosure, which is actually pretty good. And the back panel here also acts as a heatsink, so that means I will never get any thermal throttling at all. So after I made my order, I have to wait for about a month before the Amazon package arrives. As for what I bought, we have to talk about the entire top process. The first step is to choose the enclosure itself. I did some digging around and I ended up back with Orico since they have a lot more choices for USB 4.0 enclosures and they are also readily available. Their product naming though is horrifying. Eventually, I found out that in their Amazon product page, there's this table. This handy table is crucial because it lists out all of the features and I thought, hey, the last three ones are more or less the same in terms of the specs so I can just pick the one with the biggest heatsink design so that it can dissipate more heat, right? Because more fins means more surface area, better heat dissipation. And so I ordered the M234-U4-GY enclosure. As for the SSD, we actually bought two of them here. So I got the Samsung 980 Pro and unfortunately, Samsung released the 990 Pro about a month after we got this SSD. And I think it's just bad luck in terms of timing, but we also bought another SSD, which is the 2TB Sabren Rocket 4 Plus. The reason why we bought two SSDs is because we actually need one more 2TB SSD for our general use here in the studio. So we might as well buy two different brands just to test it out, how it interacts with the enclosure itself. Remember, certain SSD enclosures will have compatibility issues with certain SSDs as shown in this chart here. Actually, the ROG Arian in their product page, they specifically mentioned that certain real tech controllers will not work with this enclosure. So before we install the SSD inside the enclosure, I made sure that we have the latest firmware on both of these SSDs and did some quick speed tests on a desktop first. The 2TB Sabren Rocket 4 Plus with a proper heatsink and thermal pad achieved this speed. It's absolutely insane and at the time, I think that it is considered the world's fastest SSD. The Samsung 980 Pro on the other hand is definitely slower but it is not by far. So with that in mind, I installed the Sabren Rocket 4 Plus SSD into this enclosure to get the highest speed possible, at least in theory. With all of those preliminary tests out of the way, it is time to actually install the SSD into the enclosure. So the Oracle SSD is fairly simple. It comes with a convertible cable as well. It's rather short, but you do have to keep in mind that if you want to use USB 4 up to 40 gigabits per second, you have to use the C2CN instead of C2A. If you're gonna use USB A, then you'll only be limited to 10 gigabits per second maximum. Inside the box, we also have an included screwdriver to open up the back panel of this enclosure and we just have to slot in the SSD and start using the enclosure. But before we do that, let's talk about this piece of accessory. When I found out that this piece of accessory is inside the box, I was immediately disappointed. That means the SSD will not be touching the metal housing of the enclosure itself 
And even with the thermal pad installed, it will definitely not touch the enclosure at all. And that means the SSD will have a heatsink when it is installed inside the enclosure, but all of the heat produced will still be trapped inside like an oven. Well, I can't do anything about it, so I just proceeded with how Orico intended this enclosure to be used. I then used the desktop with a Thunderbolt 3 connection to do the speed test with the enclosure installed. And I can assure you that both SSDs, the performance on the desktop in particular was horrible. I am not sure why, since Thunderbolt 3's maximum throughput is also 40 gigabits per second. And that is just one of the many reasons why an external SSD won't work as expected, mainly with all of these unforeseen problems and suboptimal compatibility issues. But never mind, I am not gonna use this SSD with a desktop anyway. I'm gonna use it with my M1 Pro MacBook Pro to edit videos. So I use the Amorphous Disk Mark, which is a Mac version of the Crystal Disk Mark app. And I also use the Blackmagic Design Disk Speed Test. Turns out the speeds of these two SSDs when installed in this enclosure is pretty similar and in the grand scheme of things, they shouldn't really make that much of a difference. But benchmarks don't matter. How does it actually impact my video editing experience? Well, quite a lot actually. When we film a video with triple cameras, then using the multi-cam feature in Premiere Pro means that all three videos will be read and decoded from the SSD to be displayed on the screen. Previously, Triple 1080p 60fps videos can choke on the ROG area quite hard actually to the point that it will just lag there for a good 10 seconds or so that I cannot do anything on that laptop. So using the same test, I transferred that particular video to both of these SSDs using the enclosure as well. And yeah, the playhead, I can scrub it across the timeline a lot smoother even though there are still some chokes here and there but it is generally a lot smoother and better in terms of the experience. And as a reference, here's the speed of the M1 Pro MacBook Pro SSD, and it is a lot faster than the enclosure, but it will still choke sometimes when using the multicam feature with triple 1080p 60fps videos. So I think the enclosure in itself, even with either of these SSDs installed, it will perform great. Now back to the heatsink issue then. Does it get hot to the point that the SSD thermal throttles? Actually, yes. The temperature did touch 70 degrees Celsius inside and it literally became a hot box. I could drill some holes to the back panel here or swap the back panel to a mesh or something. And I think that would be a lot healthier for the SSD in the long run. So at the end of the day, is it actually worth to make your own high-speed USB 4 external SSD? It actually depends on how you want to use it. For me, since we transfer many gigabytes of data every time we finish a filming session, then this SSD actually saved me a lot of time. Editing videos off of this SSD is also more enjoyable since it doesn't lag or choke that hardly. And it just makes me not so frustrated and I don't get high blood pressure, hopefully. And that I think is where the true value of this SSD comes into play. When I edit videos, I tend to focus on the process and I just start moving around unconsciously, subconsciously actually. And if Premiere Pro suddenly chokes or lags, then it snaps me out of my workflow and it's just like a whiplash. But is the USB 4.0 SSD worth the price? Well, we paid 415.98 cents US dollars or 335 US dollars depending on which SSD we pair this enclosure with. For me personally, I think it is definitely worth the price since I edit videos 24-7, 365 and those lags and chokes, yeah, they're gone now. It's just a lot better in terms of experience. If you have no particular reason and you cannot take full advantage of the speed, then I don't think this high-speed SSD is for you. There are plenty of not so high speed SSDs available in the market that are still blazing fast. It's just not as cutting edge as this because once you go to the highest end SSD, then you get diminishing returns, but you pay a lot more money. So for those who want to make your own USB 4 external SSD, then you can use this video as a guide on what to buy and what not to buy. And honestly speaking, I cannot recommend you to get this enclosure. Get something better with a proper heatsink and that is my only advice that I can offer you in this video.
I think that we went a little bit overkill as well because we are wasting quite a good chunk of the SSD's performance with this enclosure because uh, technically if you can get an SSD that reaches about 4000 megabytes per second sequential rate and 3500 sequential write speeds then it should be already enough to saturate the enclosure's bandwidth. And I'm glad that we did this experiment because USB 4.0 devices are taking their own sweet time to get to the market mainly because it is only useful for a very niche segment of users that require large data transfers every day constantly. So that's it. That's all we have to share with you. Uh, probably we will come back to this topic once again, but let's see. If you have any questions, do leave them down in the comment section below. I will just try to help you out because there are lots of moving parts when creating an external SSD. So yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one.